everybody. Howdy. Oh, hi. <laughs> we would like to introduce Elgin and Pamela from Canada, and they have a story to tell. Awesome. Yeah, so um, my story started back in, um, it was the early, early 90s, and um, I was, um, my, a friend of mine that I went to school with, her mom, um, they were doing, she, they were Jehovah's Witnesses, and they came to my home, and that's how it, that's how it all started, uh, from a Bible, from an introduction to the Watchtower and the Awake mag magazine at the door, and then every, every week they would come back and a little bit further studies, and, and then... And then I was invited out to um, a brother's home where a lot of them was congregating and they were having a Bible study. And so that's when I started, you know, going every weekend um, <laughs> with them, you know, studying. And um, it, it got to the point when um, it got further, I, got, I became further involved with it. I started going to the Kingdom Hall, um, studying. Um, I progressed enough where I was I was not baptized at the at, at the time, and um, and so they they um, they um, I, I I went into the field service. I went into the field service. I started going door to door, and I would. I would I would um, see some of my friends at their home. I would see some of some of my friends at their home studying and talking to them about you know the the the, the Watchtower and their Weight magazine and and um, that's how it all started and I progressed enough when I when I, um, I I I eventually went into the theocratic ministry school and I was wow. and I was given um I was doing public talks. And I was not baptized. I just progressed so much because, you know, I grew up Pentecostal. My parents were all Pentecostal. And um, at my grandmother, she was a Seventh-day Adventist. But um, I, I, I decided to, you know, I said to myself, I want to, I wanna, you know, study. And because I love, I love the Word of God. I love studying. I love Jesus Christ. And I, and I thought that they were... The only organization that had the truth. <laughs> yeah, didn't I, we all? <laughs> yeah, I really believed that, and so, and so, um, and then, and then, eventually, I I met my I met Pam, and um, I remember I invited her out to the Kingdom Hall, and she came. Well. Okay, well, hold on. Just just before we get to that, let's let's make sure we clarify something so that we take maybe a potential argument away from any um, Jehovah's Witness that might be look, watching this. Mm -hmm. You said that you progressed to the point of giving a public talk. You, you you don't mean specifically the Sunday public talk, but like oh. talks during the Theocratic Ministry School, correct? Right. Okay, right, I just want to make sure we get that clear so that nobody yeah. will try to contend with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Democratic Ministry School is when yeah. I, would, I would, they would give me a topic to research and to present, and so I would do that. You know, I think at the time it was like five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, it was five minutes, great. Five minutes speech, whatever. So, so really, at that point, you were really making what Watchtower would consider really good spiritual progress. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly the term that they use, spiritual progress. Yes. Yeah, so now we're going to get to where you, uh, where you meet Pam. But I have to ask a question before we hear the story. <laughs> as well as you are making spiritual progress, how is it that you came across and met Pam, who was not a Jehovah's Witness? Mm -hmm. Because right. you know, we, you know, we all know that Watchtower likes using the scripture that says, "Don't become unevenly yoked." So certainly, yes, yes. you were you were drifting towards becoming unevenly yoked, correct? Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, here's the funny thing: I met I met Pam at her workplace. I went to okay. I went to um, you know, I went on an errand for my mom. She wasn't well at the time. And so I went to where Pam used to work, and so 
I, um, Pam, I was in line and Pam worked the line really, really fast. <laughs> and so and I got to the to the to 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 to, to her and um, so I asked her her I asked her her name and she you know she wrote she she sent she sent the document that I went there for for my mom. Yeah, I used to work with the federal government. Uh, oh, okay. So, um, I dealt with we dealt with um, people that were on an, in, unemployment. We dealt with people on medical. Okay. Some short-term disability stuff like that, right? So, um, I my job I was I was um, in a position where I could certify documents. So he he came in with his mom for his for his mother, and I certified um, the document, but I put my full name on there. So he never asked me my name. I just put my full name on there. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, "Oh, your name is Pam," and she says, "Yeah." And then I and then I and then I asked her. I said, "Are you?" I said, "Are you married?" Right. Right, and then she says, "Um, separated." And I said, "Technically, because I was studying with the witnesses at the time, and if you're separated, you're still married." Right. And so I said, "Oh, you're still married." Yeah. Right. And then we got into our first disagreement <laughs> right in there. Right. And um, you know, and so and so um, she she wrote. And what Did happened you know, was he, he, he left. I didn't write my number. He left, and then he came back again. And this time I changed. Oh, I he saw me, and he came back and he gave me his number. Right. And he told me I could call him anytime. So I said okay. I took his number. I didn't give him my number, right? And um, then I changed my 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 where my desk was. I went to a different desk to do something different. And then he must have called that number where I was at. He found the number where I was at. He called the number. And that kind of creeped me out a little bit. Like, he's, like, stalking me. It's all about the research by the witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, you know, I said, okay, fine. And, I, and we talked. He said, you can call me anytime or whatever. I said, sure. So I waited for about two or three weeks to call him. And we started talking on the phone. We talked for about two months. Yeah, before we went out on a date. We At, talked, during we talked, the day. Yeah, we, we, talked, we talked for two months before we even went out on our first date. Now, while this was all developing, were you still going to the Kingdom Hall and the meetings, yeah. Elgin? I was, I was still going to the Kingdom Hall, still taking in the spiritual food right, and all that stuff, you know, so... When I yeah. met him, he was hungry. <laughs> okay. He was hungry. Yeah. What are you eating there? <laughs> right. um, Elgin and I, we, were, we started dating. And Elgin told me he was studying with the Jehovah Witnesses, and I said, that's fine. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, right? And I said, you can study, you know, study with them. I, I, I said, well, you know, you want to study with whoever you want to study with. It was okay with me. And um, while he was studying, um, he invited me over to the Kingdom Hall one time to, for one of their public talks. And the one thing I noticed when I went to the, I'm very critical about places, different places and things, right? When I went to the um, building, inside the building, the Kingdom Hall, I heard a click. So the door was locked and it was open when we got there. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they have cameras, right? And then when we got in, I hear a click. So I got a little bit uncomfortable because I don't know why I'm hearing noises like that, right? Mm -hmm. You go into a church, any other church, you can just open the door, close it, you don't hear no noises, right? Yeah, you, you would think you'd be hearing amazing grace, right? <laughs> <laughs> And I said, Elgin, why are they why are they locking up the doors like this? Why are they doing this? He goes, Well, you know, they're always, you know, vandals and so on. I said, Well, I've never heard of anybody being vandalized before. What are they doing that's causing people to get so angry? Yeah. Right? And then we sat down for the, the public talk. It was nice and air conditioned, right? And um, we sat and I listened to what whatever they were saying. They were they were reading from a magazine, the Watchtower magazine. Yeah. And they'd ask questions and then they have somebody answer the questions. And I thought that was kind of strange because the church where I go to, we have our quarterly that we study from. There's a lesson that everybody said all the churches get it, the same thing. And we actually have separate classes, and there's a teacher, and we can discuss it and we can debate because everybody has their own interpretation of even one line in the Bible, right? But they don't do that at the Kingdom Hall. They just read the answers right there in the magazine. They don't, they're not allowed to say, I said, what if I don't agree with that? I asked Elgin, he says, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because it's never, because that's a question that 
I've never been asked of me because <laughs> we were, I was I was so obedient. Tra- yeah, so <laughs> obedient and trained <laughs> to just accept what they're teaching at face value. So yeah. I didn't know any I didn't know to ask any other, you know, questions. Right. I didn't I didn't question anything. So now let me just make sure I understand this, Pam. In in your church, which is the Seven Day Adventist, correct? Yeah. yeah. You have a similar um, magazine, for lack of a better terminology, right now. That you, quarterly. Okay, quarterly. Now you actually study this ahead of time, correct, or look over yeah, the information? Yeah. You, the quarterly. Usually, if you're a member of a church, because you're a member, um, they give you a quarterly free of charge, right? And so, like a little booklet. And each day of the week you can study, and then they have a summary at the end of the week. End of the, so on Sabbath day, we go into the church, and we can dis, we discuss it before we have the sermon, right? Okay. And um, we go, everybody interprets it differently. I mean, you read something, and you're talking about an issue that might affect you, and it just interpreted differently. We read the Bible, you know? So it, inside of this church setting with this quarterly um, book... Yeah. You can actually openly discuss something that you don't agree with yes, in that setting. That's right. Now, yes. is is there any type of disciplinary action if you do disagree with something in what Never. they're teaching? Never. Very interesting. Never. Because Kim and I know from where we are now yeah. that if you add supplement information to a watchtower study the conductor may or may not choose to publicly correct you. But at the very least, after the Watchtower study, you'll get uh, corrected privately. So I find this a huge um, um, a huge difference in teaching methods because it sounds like that you people, or the Seventh-day Adventists, excuse me, can actually openly challenge maybe a theology or something like that, whereas inside of Watchtower, you can't do that at all. Oh, yeah. God, Very God. interesting. And, and you know what? Um, we, there's, there's, a, there's a, um, a verse in the Bible that says to study to show yourself approved. Yes. Yeah. We're supposed to study. We're not supposed to take anybody's word for anything. Yep. We're, we hear the sermon or whatever it is, we're supposed to go and study for ourselves. At the end of the day, it's our responsibility to show due diligence in studying the word scriptures for ourselves. Yeah. See, now, for, for Kim and I, having been Jehovah's Witnesses all our lives, that's a foreign concept to us. <laughs> that, that, that's what was so surprising to me. And I, and I remember talking to you earlier, both you and Kim, and I, and I came in with this, well, we're just going to do this, and we're just going to do that kind of thing. And you're telling me, hold on a second here, you know, you know that they this is this is you can imagine being in a foreign country. You woke up and you're in a foreign country. Everybody's speaking a different language, different customs, and so on. Yeah. And you're going to come in and you're going to change things because they don't realize that what what they're doing or they're being deceived. You can't do it. You have to be very gentle, and show kindness. And to me, that was like, wait a sec. I had to really think about what you were saying. <laughs> and I said, you know what? You're right. You know, like. That's what I've been struggling with. Like, you know, I said, like, how can... But then I said, if you're being... If, you're being, if it's a cultish type of environment where everybody has to think the same, like drones, then it takes a while to be deprogrammed. Yeah. So the only thing that I can do is to be... Show that same loving kindness in my home towards other people. And even if they don't know, that's okay. Because it's not a fight against, for me. It's not my fight. Right? Yeah. It's, you know, I don't need to take it personally. Yeah. Right? So yeah. I just want to be like respectful of other people that you know, like yourself, that have grown up differently. Yeah. For example, yeah. it's being accepting or whatever. And it's, I, it's okay to disagree on something. Yeah. yeah. And I grew I grew up Pentecostal. Okay. And and you know, going studying with the witnesses was it was very different. Yeah. In the <laughs> sense that I'm so used to. Um, in a Pentecostal church, you know, clapping her hands, shouting out hallelujah, <laughs> getting into the Holy Spirit, yeah, and, yeah. you know, being like very excited. The, the yeah. Pentecostal church churches are very excited. You're you're involved. You're you're jumping up. You're 
you're singing, you're shouting, you're, you know, you're, you're very involved. And then when I went to the, you know, when I started studying um, at the Kingdom Hall, it was, it was very, um, it was quieter. <laughs> yeah. So, and so I wasn't used to that. And so it was an adjustment for me. I had to make an adjustment to now tone it down, you know, go according to the, um, uh, according to the, um, the instrumental music, you know, the instrumental music from the songbook, right? So it was different. And, and if the public speaker said something that you absolutely agreed with, there wasn't any shouting, amen, <laughs> or hallelujah. It's like, man, you just got to be quiet and just listen. And it's like, wow, I mean, there's just no yeah. audience feeling yeah, for the whole no religious experience. Yeah, there was no participation. It was, it was just, it, it felt like something was missing. Yeah. yeah. Something was definitely missing because... You know, like I said, in Pentecostal, we're involved, we're singing, we're clapping, we're, you know, being excited, you know, so, yeah. yeah. So getting back to your first visit to the Kingdom Hall, I know you told me a story about, you know, a sister coming up and talking to you. Yeah, she, uh, after the, after the, I saw the sermon and I, and I, I was asking Elgin questions in between. First of all, I was asking him, I said, first of all, I said, are there women that go up there and read from the magazine, right, from the Watchtower. He says, no, they're not, they're not, they're not allowed to. I said, well, why not? Why not? He said, why can't women read from a magazine? That's not a big deal. Like, really? Like, and then, he, and then after this, after the public talk, a lady came up to me and she got right into my, my personal space, which I'm not, I'm not very comfortable with, especially if I don't know you. And um, she got into my face and she said to me, so what did you think about the talk? And I just was like, why is she looking at me like that? Like, you know, and saying that, asking me that question. I said, well, you know, I didn't think anything. <laughs> I'm just listening. I just not, it's not, like, wasn't any deep thing. I mean, you're reading from a magazine. Like, what am I supposed to think? It wasn't any deep thing. <laughs> I like that comment. <laughs> so I said, that I wasn't thinking anything. And then I said to Elgin, I said, Elgin, why are they looking at me like that? Like, why are they looking at me with these, like, they're trying to, like, figure me out. Right? So... Um, we, 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 we talked to some people afterwards. I don't even remember the conversation because uh, usually when people are talking and I'm not really interested, I guess my mind drifts off somewhere and I'm there and I'll smile with everybody and not say anything, but then, you know, I'll be polite. And then I left there and I asked Elgin a whole bunch of questions. But before I left, a gentleman got up, up I guess, a, a, um, it was elder, an elder. It was an elder. elder got up and he made an announcement. He started talking about the silent lambs. The really? Same. News contra because that when they got when they got started, that's when I was going to the Kingdom Hall with Elgin. Mm -hmm. And they made an announcement how some allegations were made regarding child sexual abuse. Wow. Right from the platform. Right yep. from the platform. Right from Interesting. The platform. And it was sort of being very dismissive. Which that's that's when the um, red flags went up with me. So yeah. I said, Elgin, why is this guy being so dismissive? I said, There's an allegations about child uh, sexual you know, abuse. Yeah. Why are they not taking it seriously? Like, why are they make? Why are they being dismissive? And I'll give you couldn't answer that question at the mm -hmm. time, right? I didn't know enough. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I didn't know enough. Friends. And and I'm very direct. Like, I'll ask questions. Like, I'll be. I'll just ask the, the question right away, right? So I said okay, and I decided to do a little bit of research at the time. I just I just clicked on. There wasn't much information at the time because they were new, right? Yeah. So I said okay, I, they're on my radar. I remember them, I'll never forget that, because if people are talking about something that happened to them when they were a child, it's very, I'm very empathetic to people, when they, yeah. especially people that can't defend themselves, children, things like that. So that was in the back of my mind, and then we, he, we still kept dating, and I got pregnant, right? I was pregnant with Jada, and then Elgin got a call at the church. He, they wanted to know what context with our relationship like what are we doing in our relationship what like what are we doing so i don't want to like, because we're online here i don't I'm, you know this is going to be for everybody to see i don't want to use vulgarity because <laughs> i gave them a message to give them <laughs> right <laughs> well, you don't ask me those private questions you know i said what and i'd ask elgin what elgin what did you say right 
And um, what they did is they, one time they invited him to a picnic and I wasn't invited. Mm. Right? So I said, whatever, who cares, right? Mm. And he went to the picnic or whatever, because I said I wasn't going to interfere with his um, studying. studying, right? And then one time, Algin must have had a conversation with his father, and he asked his dad, he said, Dad, you know, um, I'm studying with the Jehovah Witnesses, and Pam's a seventh day Adventist, what should I do? I want to be with Pam. And my parents, and my parents advised me to, to go where Pam is, basically to, 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 to become a seventh day Adventist with her. Because, mm -hmm. uh, because my parents are um, Christians, and so they advised me, and they said, you know, it's best to be equally yoked. And so, you know, um, I, I guess they didn't, um, they didn't um, believe in what the witnesses were teaching. So they advised me to, to become a Seventh-day Adventist yeah. with Pam. And, and honestly, to be honest with you, at the time, I didn't want to be, I was never going to get married to Elgin if he was still continuing to be with the Jehovah's Witnesses. There's no way, right? Yeah. Because as a woman... Um, it's there's a lot of misogyny within the organization, oh, yeah. and, and and I'm a very outspoken person, so we wouldn't get along. We just wouldn't get along because I'm not taking any nonsense from anyone, right? <laughs> Especially when it comes to, comes to my rights as a woman. I yeah. think it's, I'm not going to do anything that's degrading, yeah. and nobody's going to tell me that I I need to know my place and to keep quiet and try to use Bible verse to, to substantiate Dude. that. Wow. Yeah. Good. Good for you. You know. So there's good no way. You. But you know, it's kind of funny though because. Um, when I, I eventually got pregnant with Jada, and Elgin came into the church and everything like that, and my friends, I introduced Elgin to my friends who are Seventh-day Adventists. We, we, every week we go for lunch at somebody's house, which is very nice. You know, we yes. have that kind of bonding. Yeah. And so we have picnics, we have church picnics, we have lunches, we have a lot of kids' activities for the youth. We go to the prison ministries and, and you know, minister to them. The homeless, we go out and feed the hungry, wow. all these type of things. So when I introduced Elgin, I invited him to my friend's place, and they, they, we told, he said to them that he studies with the Jehovah Witness. Well, they started to drill him. I, <laughs> and you know what? I was, I was caught off guard. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Yeah. <laughs> he, he didn't go back for lunch for a long time. <laughs> but, you know, but they had to sort of back off a little bit, you know what I mean? But, yeah. Um, they did it in jest. They wasn't. They wasn't like they were judging him. But it's just like because because of the such a difference. And even I didn't even know the differences within the Jehovah Witness, yeah. you know, type of um, organization, right? So, anyways, we decided. I was pregnant with my daughter. And we decided to go to Florida to visit his uncle. And I am always bragging to Elgin about how our church we can sing songs and everything. And, you know, it's just great. I just love the singing, right? Because when I went to the Kingdom Hall, they were singing this instrumental. They weren't even really singing some instrumental, and nobody could sing a tune. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you got that right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I, we went to Florida. I said, okay, let's go to a church. Let's go to the Sabbath, the Seventh-day Adventist church. We went to this church. First of all, there was no air conditioning. We sat down in the heat in Florida. I'm not used mm. to that kind of heat, mm. right? And there was a guy that was sitting in front of me that was playing an instrument, and he had a mole in the back of his neck, and I was, I was just focused on that, right? And, and then they played this music, and I was ready to hear some really good, nice gospel music, you know? I was so proud of my church. And this, the music was so bad. The hairs in the back of my neck started to rise. Wow. And the pastor made us get on our knees and pray. And I tell you, I've done many things in my life, but I've never been on my knees that long, ever. Wow. Praying. <laughs> ever. Right? So I said, okay, Elgin, let's go to the Kingdom Hall. <laughs> 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 they start on time. They finish on time. So we went to the Kingdom Hall. Elgin had his, um, his the older Bible. He doesn't. Yeah. Doesn't have the black the one. He doesn't have the other yeah, Bible, the, the, the new black, one. The black one. Yeah. yeah. He had his, I had mine from the seventh Venice, so they, they could differentiate. The, he's looking at me again. The elder was looking at us when we were coming to the Kingdom Hall, and he was studying Elgin. He saw Elgin. He was okay, but he looked at me a certain way. Wow. Right? Because she didn't, because she didn't have the Bible, so ah. they knew. Right. Wow. Yeah. So I had the Bible, so I was okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So we, went, we went in there. And um, it was air-conditioned, which is good. 
And then they started on time. Even the music sounded good. Anything sounded better than what I heard earlier. <laughs> and so we left from there and everything. But like, I wasn't intimidated by anyone. Like I, you know, it, it, everybody's different, right? Even when I go to my own church, there's some people that have issues, you know? Yeah. Like, it's, I don't care. Like, you can look at me a certain way. It doesn't matter. I look at you the same way, you know? And um, I just, like, I appreciate the fact that, you know, they were very welcoming, but I knew there was a little superficial side to it. It's almost like um, there's a program on our, on our TV here. It used to be 100 Huntley Street, and the guys would always be on television, and they're always happy all the time. Like, you know, the only time you're that happy is when you're on drugs, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. You know, you no one's ever that happy. You have your down moments, you have your up moments. So... That was the end of that. Like once we got married and everything, we settled into our family, and we just we, did, we went to church every Sabbath and so on. Um, one thing in our okay, then all of a sudden, Elgin was studying with um, this up and going forward. What I'd like to say first is that, and in our I've noticed in when I'm studying that the um, Jehovah Witnesses they don't um, encourage higher education. Right. Well, that's the exact opposite within our organization. Yeah, right. and the Sunday Adventists, they promote higher education, uh, higher education, you know, to get a good education and stuff like that. That is so great. They, yeah. yeah, they promote that. Yeah, so look, because of my family, my family we, had, we didn't have, um, we didn't have, um, my family was like a, it's kind of dysfunctional, so we didn't have so much higher education within our, my family, right. my family. My mother went to college, and so my grandfather way back went to um, college when he was um, in Massachusetts. But um, so I decided that I I was really encouraged to put my children in higher education. So my son went to they went to um, the Adventist schools, right? They have a school for Adventists, and also uh, my el my eldest son he went to the university in Bering Springs, Michigan, and that's Andrews University. And my other son went to college, and I've encouraged them to, to, you know, get the higher level of education and so on. Yeah. And what I've noticed, too, because, is that all the teachers that taught my sons, everybody that, that is involved in the church, they all have to get a police check. Uh, like and, a background check. Background, yeah, background even check. The, mm -hmm. Even the pastors. Yeah. Wow. Well, everybody has to have a background check, especially if you're dealing with kids. Yeah. A vulnerable, um, vulnerable persons check. Yeah, it's, it's a different it is, one. Yeah, it's different. It's a different term from from what you guys are used to. So it's pretty much the same. You know, they yeah. do a yeah. background check on you and stuff yeah. like that. And um, even the schools here have to do it. Yeah. When you volunteer at your own school here, you have to have a background check. So they have that, and plus we have policies and dealing with child sexual abuse. They're written. Yeah. They're there. It's available online. Mm -hmm. You know, we have policies. Every every book that's published by the Seven Day Adventist organization, the conference, is available to anybody who wants to look at it. Any letter that's drawn out is available to anybody that wants to look wow. at it. So no secrecy. No, no secrecy. secrecy. Even we collect tithes and offering at our church. Even that is a public record. So we have a church board. We have a church meeting. There's a church board and there's a church town hall meeting, and they get up there in the front of the pulpit. And they talk about how much money was collected, how many things, and what, where it went. And those things go to pay for the operating of the church, as well as um, any, any kind of work around the world. It just depends where you want to direct your, you can direct it wherever you want to direct your monies, right? Yeah. The tithes itself goes to pay the pastors, the teachers, and anybody that's being paid under the conference. Yeah. And everybody, everything is accounted for. That's everything. the way it should be. Yeah. There's no yeah. secrets that I have ever known of in my life while I've been in, in, involved in the seven day effort, whether, mm -hmm. whether that, what, what goes on there yeah. happens in our church. So there's no secrets. I don't like secrets. Secrets means that there's problems. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you got that right. <laughs> yeah. So now, at this point, you two are married. You're in Florida. And you're going back to the Kingdom Hall, right, Elgin? That, uh, have you restarted studying again at this point? I did. Yeah, I did. I. When is it last year? Or um, before? So when when Pam was pregnant, um, they wanted the the elders. They wanted to have um, they wanted to have a talk with me. <laughs> and I thought I was kind of strange. What do you want to talk about, right? <laughs> And so, yeah, they wanted to talk about 
my involvement, uh, you know, and they wanted details. And I'm like, wow. whatever, man. Yeah. And so I eventually um, stopped going because I didn't want to um, um, get disfellowed. This I didn't want to go through the process of the disfellowship and the shunning and all that stuff. So I, I, I took it upon myself to wean myself out <laughs> of the Kingdom Hall. And so I joined, I joined Pam going to the Seventh-day Adventist church. Yeah. Okay, now, but, but, you're, but you're not baptized, correct? No, I'm not baptized. So, so when you, so then, having studied with Jehovah's Witnesses for a while and knowing the process, even though you were not baptized, you knew that you were putting yourself in a position that the congregation was going to shun you, correct? Exactly. Yeah. I had a because they, because um, when I was at at that particular kingdom hall in Toronto, it was um, there was a young lady in the in the in the in the um, kingdom hall that was this fellowship, and I saw how she 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 would come she would still come, she would still come at the at the kingdom hall. But she would sit at the back, at the very back of the at the yep. uh, uh, at the kingdom hall, and um, nobody would talk to her. And I'm like, that is so. I thought it was so rude and mm. impertinent. It, I thought it was so arrogant, uh, you know, that here this organization is promoting love and peace and all this stuff, but yet they're gonna treat someone so disrespectfully. And I. I, I didn't like that I didn't like that that vibe and I didn't want to go through it because yeah. I was about to go through it myself and I'm like yeah. you know what forget this and so I that's when I started going to um, the Seventh Day Adventist Church with Pam and um, but I, I met someone this is um, recently not too not too long ago I met about two years ago. I met someone at my workplace where I work at this hospital, and um, he was, I didn't even know he was a witness, but eventually he started, you know, he would start giving me the watchtower to, you know, <laughs> to take home the away magazine. Here we go again, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I'm like, I didn't tell, I didn't tell him about the, I didn't tell him that I had experience with the witnesses already. So we started, he started, you know, um, started doing a study with me at work. Mm. Yeah, so he started doing a study at work. And he was bringing home the Watchtower magazines, and I saw them lying around the house, <laughs> and I was going to throw them out, right? <laughs> but I just left them. I just ah. left them. Yeah, and so, and so I started studying with him. I... Um, yeah, I started studying from one of the publications, um, and then he invited me to the Kingdom Hall. Yeah, he, he wanted him, no, Algin came home and told me that he wanted him to come to the Kingdom Hall when he was doing a talk. And I said to Algin, I said, Algin, why are you not inviting him to our church? Why, why is he inviting you? And why is he inviting you by yourself? He does not know we're married, Right. Like, yeah. why is he doing it just to you and not me? Like, he, that would be the proper thing to do. Oh, I would absolutely. Think. Invite right? you yeah, as so a I couple. Did, I did mention it one time. I did mention, you know, you, you know, you could come to, what I invite you to my church. And he said, he said to me, he said, that, um, it's Christendom. <laughs> they, they don't, you know, um, um, get involved with Christendom. And I, I didn't know what that meant. And so... I eventually realized, you know, after researching and um, and being around witnesses that Christendom is a wicked, it's a wicked system, <laughs> the wicked. Uh, how, how do you say it? The, the world, world empire of false religion. <laughs> yes, thank you. World <laughs> empire of false religion. Yeah. And so, and so they don't they don't mix with Christendom. Right. And, and I'm like. Well, you know, um, you invite me to your organization, and but you don't want to come to mine. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And so I, I started 
I started going um, to the to the Kingdom Hall. My Pam was against it. She she didn't want me to be involved with it at all. And well, I was I was angry because the reason why I was angry, to be honest with you, was because not only was Elgin was studying him like like it was almost like he was studying with Elgin like he was a thief in the night. Like he's using that environment. I said, why doesn't he come and study at the house here in front of, um, in front of, like in front of me? Like at least include me into the discussion, right? Why is he doing it like a thief in the night at your workplace? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And then inviting you, like you, to the workplace. I said I didn't feel comfortable with it. And then Elgin's attitude started to change. Uh oh. <laughs> right. So you know what we're talking about with the, the uh, convention that's going on about attitude adjustment. Yeah. Right. I noticed that Elgin had it needed an attitude adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I just I mean he started saying how he doesn't believe in the Trinity anymore and yeah. he, and then he has a problem with the, you know with birthdays. I didn't I didn't believe in birthdays anymore. I didn't yeah. believe in Halloween or yeah. Christmas, so I started to be, I started to become like them without mm. even realizing it, and yeah, yeah so. So, yeah, so, so, so yeah. let me just ask you real quick, from, from your past experiences with the Jehovah's Witnesses up to the point where you are now, what, what changed to where you were now recognizing that these teachings were now false? Was there a different method of studying? from the past up to this point or, or or did you just not care and you know the kingdom hall just seemed to be a nice place to go or something to that effect yeah well what, what changed was when my Pam she started researching about the kingdom hall and then she 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 she, 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 she talked to me about how much pedophiles mm -hmm. are within the organization. But I, I, would, yeah. I would just in, interrupt Elgin just a little bit to say that when Elgin started studying with the, it was causing a lot of problems within our relationship because yeah. he was looking to them for advice now. He wasn't even coming to me anymore. He was looking for them for advice and they were telling him what to do, right? And it was causing a lot of tension in our relationship. So what mm -hmm. I decided to do is, okay, you know what, the only way to battle this is to know exactly what I'm dealing with. Yeah. Then I found out that they're not just a little, nice little man and lady knocking on the door harassing you. It's deeper than that. Yeah. And I, the first thing that I saw when I went online was the Australian Royal the, uh, the, the Australian Royal Commission, and they started talking about it. Then I did more research and more research, and then one day I said to Elgin, I said, Elgin, based on some of the rules that the uh, that the um, the organization has for people within the Kingdom Hall, right? I said, you're going to have to leave me and my daughter. You cannot be in our environment if you, if you continue to study with them. Eventually, you'll have to leave us. He says, well, he doesn't think that's true. I said, because they're not telling you it's not true. Yeah. But based on their policies, that's going to have to happen. Right? Yeah, I didn't believe it, though. Right? I didn't believe and then it. I started, and then I said, you know what? And then I told him about the, 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 because of their policies, they're harboring pedophiles. It's a haven for pedophiles, right? Yeah. So I said to him, I said, you know what, Elgin? I don't know who you're associating with, and neither does anybody else, it seems. Because they never, they never tell anybody within their own congregation about these pedophiles, right? Yeah. So therefore, if you continue to study with these people, my daughter and I will be going elsewhere. Because I don't know who you're associating with. Not everybody that wants to do harm to children is going to make themselves known because they're right. predators, right? And I think this is about the time that you contacted us. Yeah, because I was really distraught. I, I contacted you, reached out to both you and Mike, and I, and also to the it's AWW something organization. They, they, oh, they yeah. Yeah. AWA. Yeah, and um, I reached out to you, and... Um, because I was just feeling a little angry, like I didn't know how to deal with it. So I figured, why, why don't I just deal with people that are extra whole witnesses? Let me find some extra whole witnesses. Because they would know more than I would know, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's when I reached out to you guys, and you guys gave me some good advice, and I implemented it. And I knew one thing for sure, that Elgin loves his daughter. Yeah. And I said, you know what, how would you like if some man did that to your daughter? I said, by the way, ask him these questions. Ask the person you're studying with these questions. Yeah. And... Elgin saw his reaction. 
Sign Did you make him a little un uncomfortable? <laughs> huh? Did you make him a little uncomfortable with those questions? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was lying to him. He was saying that the policies were changed. They changed the policies. Now they're supposed to call the police right away. And I said, Elgin, he's lying. He's lying because their own policies have not changed. They're still there. As a matter of fact, their own governing body, Jeffrey Jackson, said they're not changing the policies. So unless he's a part of the governing body and he has some say-so, he's not telling the truth. Yeah. And then what he did is he got, he was repeating the same thing over and over again. I said, why is he doing that? Right? And then he told Elgin not to have me listening on the conversation that he can discuss it with me afterwards. Wow. Yeah. So and, now, now he's really starting to come between you and Elgin. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then he said to Elgin, um, he said to Elgin that, you know, haven't I advised you, didn't I advise you to stay with your wife and, and all this type of stuff. And, and I said to myself, like, he advised him to stay with me. Like, really, he wants to take credit for that? What? Right? So I said, like, I said, that was arrogance, right? Yeah. And, and then I said, I said to Elgin, I said, okay, ask him, ask him about Charles Taze Russell. <laughs> oh, Pam, Pam was going deep. Right? <laughs> right to the beginning of it all. Right for the juggler. Ask him, yeah. if he, ask him if he knows about him, first of all. And then he went off like you wouldn't believe. He started talking about Saul and um, what kind of person Saul was in the Bible. And he's not, he wasn't different afterwards and all this kind of stuff. I said, Elgin, he never, he never answers your questions. He's always reflecting, you know, he's always doing deflection, yep. right? Yep. And he's always, he's always projecting. And he had some really nasty things about to say about the Seventh-day Adventist Church, saying, oh, there's, there's pedophiles everywhere, and so on. And, and he says that not in his congregation, but then he stopped changing the story every time Elgin talked to him. Wow. And then one time he said, he put this elder, elder well, I'll say his first name is Peter. And he's denying, because he's, the, the, the guy that was studying with Elgin said that they changed the policies, and now they have to call the police right away. But then when the elder came on the phone to talk, he says, no, they never changed the policy. <laughs> right? and, how, and how these people that claiming to be molested as children and raped, you know, a lot of them, it's not true. They're just lying. Yeah. And, you know, you have to feel, you have to feel sorry for the brothers in the um, congregation. I said, Elgin, he never showed any compassion whatsoever. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I said, he was a sick monster, right? Yeah. Said, I said, I, if you want, if, you know what, if, if, if you're, the person that's studying with you wants to take me on, I have no problem taking you on because my mind is like a computer. Kim, you, you can, I don't know where you find stuff. He's like, you find stuff. You find little diamonds lying around the corner of your house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with research and so on, like recordings and everything. Well, I do the same thing. I study yeah. and I made sure that I had, a, I was purpose driven. And the more I studied about, well, I, I watch videos on some of the people that have really suffered at the hands yeah. in, the, in the organization. Yeah. I, I, one time I, I was talking to Elgin and tears came to my eyes. When I'm going to sleep at night, there's little children, five, six years old, who have elders doing stuff to them. They're, maybe their father's doing stuff to them. And they have nobody to turn to. Yeah. And these kids that have grown up within the organization, they're... They use fear mongering so they to keep them quiet and threats, basically, I think it's threats, right? And emotional abuse to keep yeah. them quiet. And it really makes me sad because I have a daughter. Yeah. And I can't imagine being in that position, not knowing who to go to or who yeah. to, you know. And, yeah, and, yeah, and, and the person that's getting abused has to, is this two witness rule. I'm like, what is that all about? Usually, yeah. the, usually when things like that happen, there's no witnesses. Right. Exactly. Just, and they take everything out of, and they read, like, I like, Mike, I like how you, when you see a verse, but then you say, no, let's go above the verse. Let's go a few things ab above it and yeah. below it. Put it because in context. context. Exactly, the context, exactly. It's about context, you know, and that's where I'm coming from. Like, it's about context. So nobody's going to give me any scripture say, okay, what, was, what were you talking about? And somewhere in the Middle East, somewhere, Right. People were, there's a certain way of life. That's, yep. just, that's for real. There's history. 
It's not an opinion. It's history. How were the people living in those days? And that's what you have to put in put into context is that lifestyle back then. Yeah. Because yeah. let's 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 face it. People back in Paul's day did not have a handheld iPod to where they could go to JW.org and find their answers. Exactly. <laughs> they just didn't have it. And you know, just to go back to like when you guys stepped up, you guys replied to me. You have no idea what state I was in at the time. I was really down, and you know, I knew that I didn't want to leave Elgin, but I knew that that's what I might have to do because I don't know who he's associating with. He's so friendly, yeah. and these people are coming. He, as a matter of fact, this one guy that's studying with him, he had come to my house one time. You know, so I don't know anything about these people. And I said, you know what? I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to go. So this was, you guys were basically my last shot. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you from my side now of when I got your email, you know, it was all capital letters and exclamation points. And it says, please help. JWs are breaking up my family. And I read your email and I just sat there for probably about 10 minutes just crying. Both of us cried because, you know, we, we, we saw the, how <laughs> desperate you were at this point. Yeah. And that night, um, you know, I just could not sleep and I was just praying all night. It's like, oh God, please don't let the witnesses break up another family. Mm -hmm. And I was so happy, you know, to get your email. I can't remember if it was a day or two later. And you said that Elgin had stopped studying and that you guys were talking. And that was just, oh, I was just ecstatic. Now let's, let's put this into context a little bit more for our viewing audience. Right. If I remember the email correctly, wasn't there a brother giving your husband the name of single sisters in the anticipation of your family breaking up? What 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 was happening is what I thought was happening is at the time. Yeah, is, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what happened at the time was that um, just knowing Elgin and how he was and everything like that, I believe that that was what that that was was go what was going on. Like, yeah. it, you no, know, without a doubt. Like, you know, I mean, like, they're not, they're human beings. They're not anything special. Like, you know what I mean? So they, all that temptation is there. Yep. Right? Like, Elgin is like fresh meat. <laughs> yeah. <You know>, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm that's, glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, that's why they probably let him go door to door talking to people because they say he's a magnet. And, you know, yeah. they, they, you just have to stand there, right, and talk to people. So... I was really concerned about that, like, you know, and like, um, just have, what, the, the reason why I, I was going in that direction was because they were, when he started going to the Kingdom Hall, Elgin adjusted his time schedule at work, so I had to get up an hour earlier just to mm. accommodate them, yeah, and I was wow. mad, I was furious, right? Yeah. And then, what he would do, he wanted to monopolize his time and have him come on Wednesdays, and then Fridays. And then wow. for sure Saturdays, because that's... Sundays. And Sunday and Saturdays, too. We wanted to come Saturday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Saturdays. Yeah. So, so, they, so they were really trying to force the indoctrination then. Of course. Oh, yeah. Wow. And, I, and, I, and I didn't... To me, I was looking at it as if I'm, I'm just going for a Bible study. Because I, I, love, I love the Bible, and I love studying, so I didn't see anything wrong with it. Yeah. But I didn't know that there was something, um, you know, deeper beneath the surface. Yeah. And yeah. I, I saw that. I could see it, right? And even when Elgin would say, oh, I don't want to, I don't, um, I don't want to recognize Christmas anymore and birthdays. I said, oh, yeah, when you were getting those birthday gifts, you really didn't like those things. <laughs> <laughs> those Christmas gifts, you didn't like those things. You were, we were, we were abusing you, yeah. right? <laughs> so... I just said, you know, this is ridiculous. You know, like, this is like, just too far. And so I just, and eventually, eventually, I was I gave him more information. And even when I was trying to show him a video on something and giving him some research, the same guy was calling him to speak to him. And he says, I'm speaking to my wife right now. I'll call you right back, right? He says, well, when are you going to get off? And he was just very, very intrusive. And I, wow. if you know my personality, I'm a very outspoken person. And I was dying just to get a hold of him <laughs> <laughs> and just, just give him a piece of my mind. Yeah. I was holding back. But I realized something. When he was talking, he was just regurgitating what the elder was telling it, was saying at yeah. the same time. So he would only repeated it. And I'm, I'm asking Elgin some very intelligent questions that he should ask the person. And 
Um, he wasn't able to answer those questions. Yeah. <laughs> right? And, and most of the time... He doesn't, he doesn't sound like he's very educated to me. Yeah. And, most like, the, and I started feeling sorry for him. Yeah. Yeah, and most of the time, the Jehovah's Witnesses will not answer your, your, your questions. They, yeah, they, they, they won't, won't do it. Ask, yeah, they'll ask him questions or yeah. they won't ask him questions because I will shut them down. But... Um, but I, I would just say that I noticed that he didn't really know the answer. And I, and I kind of felt a way. Like, I almost felt a little compassion, a little compassion for him because I didn't like his boldness. Yeah. Meaning he was impertinent and out of order when it came to my relationship. And I don't like any, I don't mess in his relationship. I'm not calling his wife and telling her what for. He don't need yeah. to be calling my husband and telling him anything about me or yeah. my, his family, how he should run his family. Yeah. But I'm not a domineering person, but I don't like t any nonsense. And those of us who have been witnesses our entire lives, you know, we just take it for granted that this is what elders do. They're very intrusive and, you know, con want to control everything about your life, you know. So we're just kind of used to it. But it's good to get a perspective, you know, for someone who never was a witness, that, like, oh, my God, you know, these guys are pushy and trying to control our marriage and everything see, else. See, and that's the thing, because, you know, when you're indoctrinated into a cult like the Washington Bible Tract Society and Jehovah's Witnesses, you come to view that these elders are your shepherds and they're there to care for the flock. And right. a lot of these men just totally take uh, that power they've been given and just go on on a power trip, really. And, yep. you know, and that, that was one of the reasons why I contended with a lot of elders when I was a Jehovah's Witness is because, you know, like you, I was reading the Bible and I was getting something different out of it. But, you know, like a good JW, it's always, well, you have to wait on Jehovah and Jehovah will make it plain in his own due time. So that's that's a technique they use to put you back in your place if you feel like you uh, you know, you want to start, you know, leading the pack, I guess. <laughs> and it and it and it works when you're indoctrinated and or like Kim and I both growing up in this environment, you come to look at these men as if they're shepherds, so their line of questioning doesn't offend someone who is a Jehovah's Witness. So it's really good to see someone else's perspective because now I'm hoping that if someone at Watchtower will stumble on this. Hey guys, this is how the world really perceives you. This is how this is how your elders are looking in the eyes of people that know nothing about Jehovah's Witnesses. You're truly painting a different picture here. Yeah, and I have like my I was purpose driven from that point on with Elgin, and just now when I realize all the stuff that's been going on, and I've been watching so many videos. You believe I look every day. I every look, day, she every goes to bed <laughs> watching videos of. <laughs> Uh, of, um, uh, the, the great apostate, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the unwitnessed, Joel, Mark you know? and Cora, Evie Brooklyn, <laughs> Dallas, <Yeah>. Canada, <laughs> watched our examination. Yes, That's really good. He's an inventist too, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's. I think his his fleshly brothers wanted your. If I remember right, or, it was a family yeah. member. So, and it's, it, it, it's really, I mean, it is, it's really good and it's really encouraging to be able to sit down with folks like you that have a little bit of knowledge about Jehovah's Witnesses and can see the, how, I, for lack of a better word, how queer, strange this organization really is when it comes to their interpretation and application of the Bible. Exactly. So... <clears throat> It too, they 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 change the wording even in the old Bible that they use in the new one. There's different changes in it as yeah. well. So I, I I I was I was studying another video. I forget his name, but he um he goes to the um the um the uh, information from the Jehovah Witnesses uh, like the magazines and so on. But he's ne he never was a Jehovah Witness either. And so um, when I kept I kept I study I go in the scriptures I'm studying the scriptures along with I even have Elgin's um, the silver sword and I have the old one and I put them together and I'm looking at the both of them and I'm reading it and so on so what I'm noticing too that even now Elgin is he got rid of his he got rid of his Watchtower magazine <laughs> he doesn't have them anymore. well we're yeah. very happy to oh go ahead no I was gonna say that yeah I I I got I got all the 
Watch Star in the Weight magazine, and I just got rid of them. <laughs> and we were very happy to hear that you stopped studying. And if I understand you guys right, because we've had several conversations now by phone and Skype, that you guys want to join the vast apostate army and join the fight. <laughs> yes, course, that's yes, correct. Yes, that's correct. And I'll, I'll just say this: one time I had somebody tell me when I when I came in, I wasn't a Seventh Day Adventist all my life. I chose to be a Seventh Day Adventist. Yeah, and see. That difference in somebody that's born into it because yeah. they don't appreciate some things. But I came into it as an adult, right? And I would say that I'm choosing to come in and join you guys. I'm not just, you know, born into it or, you know, I'm choosing to. So I have a tremendous amount of respect for each and every person that um, I come into contact with that is similar to your situation. I... I, I'm not coming from a perspective of judging anymore. Like, like when I, before I started talking to you, Mike, mm -hmm. I'm coming with an I think it's okay. This person may not even, they're, very, they're sincere. They believe in what they believe, but they, they're just misguided. So how can I, what can I do to change, like how, even make them start thinking, plant that seed. Yeah. So that's what I think about, is how can I plant the seed, you know? And, I, yeah. and again, I kind of like having a little bit of fun. I'm a little bit of bad. I have a little bit of bad fun. <laughs> oh, we, we like having fun, too. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll get to talk to the next time. Um, the next time that person wants to have a Bible study, I want you to sort of tape it. I want to hear what he says to you. Yeah. Right? And just like he doesn't know, just like, okay, they're saying that they know who the pedophiles would be. If there was pedophiles, they would know. Right? I said, Elgin, he doesn't even know that you're not even coming in as a Jehovah Witness, but you just want to study. So he could be mistaken about that. He's mistaken about that, for mm -hmm. sure. Why yeah. couldn't he be mistaken about somebody else? Yeah. yeah. And, he, and, he, and, he, and he said to me, he, he told me that there's no pedophile in his, or in his, um, um, uh -huh. um, in his kingdom hall that he says, Elgin, you, you've been to the kingdom hall, you know the brothers, you see how they interact wow. with kids. Yeah. I'm like, if a pedophile is not going to come out and say, oh, hello, I'm a pedophile. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't work that way. No, it don't. They it don't wear people. signs. <laughs> and he also made mention to Elgin that he, they, they look at it as a sin. They don't look at it as a crime. Right. And brothers, if they... If they confess, they confess it. They may, after a period of time, they'll get privileges taken away. But then they'll, they'll, they could be reinstated because yeah, yeah. they've forgiven. Shouldn't we forgive the brothers? That's what he said to us. We should forgive them if they've done some wrong. And I said, oh, again, you know what? Yeah. You know what? We need to bring. You know what we need to do? We need to bring all those governing bodies right to the prison cells and let them say that same stuff in there. And every <laughs> one of them will be somebody's girlfriend. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let, let. <laughs> In there. Morris, are you guys hearing this? <laughs> so yeah, now, in there. let them say that. Let them use it. Let them call upon Jehovah. Yeah, in there. Yeah, while exactly. They're, while they're biting the pillow, you understand? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, they'll become. They'll become. They'll pillow become biter. pillow biter. Yeah. <laughs> I think you guys are catching on now. I made a fine addition to the vast apostate army. <laughs> Seriously, like they, they just, they're, they're sick. They're sick. Yeah. They're yeah. sick people. And they have this sort of, um, what do they got? The God complex. That's what they have. They have this God complex. Yep. They're power, too much power. And they give the, these elders have, are, have, have been given so much power um, with the title as an elder, because they're shepherding the flock and so yeah. on, that they that they that they misuse it and they're so misguided. It's not even funny. And you know what? I didn't even realize how easy it 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 is to become brainwashed. I was like, I was there, and yeah. if, if it wasn't for the relentless effort of my wife, I would still be in there. Yeah. 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 It's so easy. You, you don't even know you're being brainwashed when you when you're within the organization because it's so subtle. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's so subtle. And yeah. what I'm doing right now, to be honest with you, I'm telling every person that I know about the organization and what their policies are about. 
I'm not saying that all Jehovah Witnesses are bad people. They're very good people. They're very kind people. I'm talking about their policies. I'm attacking their policies. Yeah. Right? I don't hate the sinner. I hate the sin. Yeah. Right? Right? So my thing is, is that that's how my approach is going to be. I've talked to a lot of people within my church organization. Good. Uh, our church has about... And on record, they have about 1,500 members in our own, that one church, wow. and that one building, right? Um, I, I want to go to the top and just bring this out in the open, because a lot of people don't know. I talk to my friends, who says, Pamela, how come we don't hear about it? How come we don't hear about it? I said, and I said, I didn't know, and then I talked to you, Mike, you said that because they put a, a gag order on Gag the order on a lot of the court cases, exactly. Yeah, so, so that, that prevents the news media from actually reporting more in depth on right. this type of stuff. Yep. And plus, I do know some people that are involved, that are, they are involved with the newspapers and so on. So it's I'm making it my duty, but I need to come in with a lot of information so I can give it to them to show them yeah. and find out who's the one that does the research and so on. So I'm willing to to do that. And I'm telling everybody that I come into contact what's going on, so they know. Yeah. Right. They can keep an eye on things and so on. And I'm I'm hoping one day that I can even actually give a testimony in my own church. You know, and well, talk about great. Point, you know, just so, so people know how grateful that I am, that I am a Seventh Day Adventist. And there are some people that are agnostic. There's some people that don't believe in God or whatever, and that's fine for them. You know, I'm not here to judge anybody. Yeah. I said, you know, well, you, everybody has to live their life the way they want. Well, you was you was saw the broadcast, the vast apostate hour last night. I mean, yes. how did how did you come? Because you because you've actually this is what your third or fourth program that you've sat in now in the yes. chat room. Yes. Yeah. Um, how, just kind of off the beaten path a little bit. Um, after last night's program, how did you feel about the XJW community at that point? I mean, because we were, because I, I, I hope that you could appreciate that we were trying to break down some barriers last night with that program. Yes. Um, I believe that also internal barriers, too, because you, like you were talking about how sometimes some overzealous XJWs um, would be very critical of Christians, for example, mm -hmm. because so they're so beaten, they were so beaten down that they don't believe in anything. But they'll, you know, there might be there might be some that might criticize other people that still believe that they're Christian, they yeah. believe in Jesus Christ, and so on. And so I got that. I was and how you guys were working that out and talking about it within amongst yourself. I thought that was awesome. And um, I had a um, comment from. JW Crisis, Gilbert. Gilbert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I put down, I'm, I've never been a Jehovah Witness, right? He says, well, since you've never been a Jehovah Witness, what, maybe, what we should do is start calling you names and, and like you're an apostate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I said to him, I said, you know, you're too kind. And I said, and how should I respond to the negative comments? <laughs> <laughs> right? So I think he's, he's really funny, but I just, yeah. I feel honored that that people have been so gracious to me and, and welcoming me, even when I'm making my comments, I feel honored. You know, I do no way take um, take it for granted the the opportunity that I have to, you know, show that I'm also. I'm, I mean, I'm I may have never been a Jehovah Witness, but I have compassion for people. Yeah. I care. And that's and that's what that's what we need as ex members is we need folks like yourself and Elgin that can have a little bit more sympathy than you know say like another mainstream religion or you know someone that just that, that cannot identify what we've all gone through being in a mind controlled destructive cult where they control every aspect of our lives and you know I know there's going to be some that say look you know you guys were never Jehovah's Witnesses why would you even bother you know getting in this fight you know what do you care how how would you answer that question <laughs> yeah because I want I want people to to know that it's um it's an organization that um that you know um, say one thing but it does something totally different once it's very subtle what they talk about at the beginning you know they talk about the love of Jesus Christ and, and 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 God and so they give it to you in in um they chunk it up they give you a piece here and a piece there yeah. but then once you really get involved and you, 
and you go all the way and, uh, and now you're doing field service and you're doing um, and you're getting deeper and deeper involved with the organization, then you're hooked. And so they hook you in and then now um, I, 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 I've never gone as far as where I, I went as far as getting baptized. But I was almost at the point of getting baptized. And so when my wife, you know, um, started doing her research and started educating me on what's really going on, then I said, then it was like an awakening. I, yeah. I, I woke up, it's like I woke up from a dream. Yeah. Because I was I was so I was so involved with the organization. I wanted to be around them and they studying. Were they were love bombing and him. They were love. Yeah. They were loving yeah. on me, and I was I was and because I'm a people person, I love that. Right. Yeah. You know, and so you know to say to people that you know what, um, just to, you know, it's not what it's cracked up to be. Yeah. It's not what it's cracked up to be. And I would just say, when I used to try to talk to him before that, he would say, oh, you're just trying to control me, right? <laughs> That's what he said. You're trying to control me. I said, oh, okay. I said, let's talk about control. Let's talk about control. Let's look <laughs> for the rules. Let's look at the hundred and I don't know how many, 40-something rules that they have at the Kingdom Hall. Let's yeah. read them, shall we? Yeah, I think they got 144,000 rules is what they got. I think that's, that's how that scripture and revelation applies. <laughs> I, I, I started reading the rules. I went over every single rule. Oh, you can't join the Y, honey. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. It. You can't do this. You can't do that. Can't All these, you can't play sports. You can't work. You can't be involved with the government. You can't do this. You can't do that. He goes, really? I said, yeah. You want to be you want to be controlled by them, or would you rather be controlled by me? <laughs> See, and there's a bunch of unwritten rules that yeah. aren't in print. You know, uh, like you can't buy Girl Scout yeah. cookies. Um, yeah, stupidness like that. Oh yeah, yeah. and. I, now, have you had an opportunity to look at some of the convention videos that Watchtower is putting out this year? I did. Now, think about that little boy, Sergey, that loved playing the violin. I yeah. don't know if everybody caught this, but towards the end, you know, he's in the hospital room and a family member comes up with a picture and says, Oh, you know, I didn't know you used to play the, uh, the, the violin. And his response was contradictory to what you saw in the beginning because he says, oh, I lost interest. No, he didn't lose interest. His father stole that interest from him. I saw that. I saw that and I, 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 tears came to my eyes when I saw yeah. that. Yeah. You know, they, as a parent, you want your children. I, I know my daughter. My daughter My daughter is a uh, brown belt in karate. Uh -huh. right? I push her in that, right? Because it's her interest and I want to see her do well, right? But for a father to do something like that, it reminded me of Matthew 7 when it talks about what father, when his son asks for bread, he gives him a stone. Ah, you know what? I should have thought to use that in That's that a, video. That's a very right? good one, Pam. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, and so yep. I said, like, you know, basically he just gave him a stone. Yeah. You know? Or, I said, or like, a scorpion. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And just like, people that have been, like, they didn't go to take further on in their education. This, I'm seeing a lot of people who didn't go to school and you know they're working in other kind of jobs like labor working and stuff like that even the guy that was studying with elgin he left his job at the hospital and now he's washing windows <laughs> oh. yeah yeah i know <laughs> been there <laughs> been there done that i got the t-shirt <laughs> yeah because he wants to be um a regular pioneer yep and so he's washing windows that's a good job let me let me tell you something it snows here Okay, window washing is the, is seasonal. Yeah, yeah. It snows here, so it's only summer. It's only some. So I like to know. Okay, how is he going to supplement his income? I'll tell you. The cost of living in Toronto is very high. Even renting is high, right? Mm -hmm. The houses, base houses here in, in Toronto cost a million dollars. A million dollars a month. Wow. wow. Right? right. So he's so. What is he going to do? Apply for welfare? Right? And Probably. to supplement his income. So he's going to use my tax dollars to support to support his lifestyle. 
when when he already had a good job because if I yeah. caught in the story he was working in the hospital, correct? That's, That's right. right. So and he was probably getting paid a very good base wage working in a yeah. hospital. That's yeah. Right. Yes, yeah. Year round. Yeah, year round. Yeah. Yeah. And you get shift work, so you, it's like part time. So they um they give you lots of shifts, so you get full time hours, right? Yeah. So. You know, it just, it's just, it was upsetting that the, he's obviously very passionate of what he believes in, right? That's why he did what he did, but he's misguided. He's a young man yeah. and he's missing out on so much stuff now. And I can only see how the way they control people, first of all, they isolate you. They don't allow you to get an education and they don't want you to have any free thought. They take yeah. those things away from you and you have a perfect candidate. Yep. You have a perfect candidate. And to go to the question you asked me why I'm doing it, I'm not a, I'm not a Jehovah, I was never a Jehovah Witness, why I'm doing it. I care about people who, can, who cannot fend for themselves. Yeah. I care for the underdog. I care about um, policies that hurt people. Yeah. Those things bother me. I can't sit back and, you know, I, I just, I don't know, maybe it's my personality. But I'm greatly affected by things when I see things that are doing people that are treated unfairly. Yeah. And the fact that I am a mother and knowing that, okay, there's pedophiles within the um, Jehovah Witness community, but that doesn't mean that they can't be out of the community. My daughter's still not safe. Right. The people's aren't, uh, our children are not safe. No. Right? They have jobs in all kinds of different fields where they might be working with children. Yeah. Yeah, because... Right? because they've never had a background check on them. And, you know, for a Jehovah Witness to go into the school system, even here in the United States, they have to have a background check. So you don't see too many Jehovah's Witnesses in, you know, the school system because they know they got to get a background check. But on top of that, Mike, though, they wouldn't be worried about a background check because even if they admitted that they did something to a child or they raped somebody or they did anything, Right? It stayed within. It stays within the water. Oh yeah. Has a, so it's not a public record. So it, they don't have to be afraid of it. They so don't turn them they, over. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, they come in like a, a red herring within these organizations. So they'll get their they'll get their police check because they like their money, right? They'll get their police check or they'll go and do their own business, right? Yeah. But um, they you would never know that they were doing any of those things. Yeah. Right? Even even if you if they came to school, if they came anywhere, they wouldn't know because there's just no record of them doing that. And that's what bothers me, that that they, that, that the Watchtower can get away with this nonsense. I'm supp I'm looking to, for, my ideal thing is to look that they have a worldwide class action lawsuit and bring them down because, you know, money talks. Yeah. Money talks. Yeah. Right? So if they could just get together and somebody just organize it, some lawyer, you know, ambitious lawyer could organize, I know about jurisdictions and so on, just right. do a class action lawsuit and bring them down. Definitely, we'll just shut them up. Just cut them out the head. <laughs> oh, I agree. <laughs> I'm on board with that. <laughs> that's for sure. That's why I do what I do, because I care. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. it. There's, and, not, there's nothing extravagant about it. And to be honest with you, I think the more that non-Jehovah's Witnesses start watching ex-Jehovah Witness videos and hear what we're absolutely seeing, I'm thinking we're going to find that there'll be more people that are non-Jehovah's Witnesses willing to, you know, step out of their comfort zone, so to, so to speak, and start lending us a hand. Because that's, that's one of the reasons why I think this year's district conventions is so good, because Watchtower made an absolute blunder by putting everything what they believe on you know on um, disc in video form all we got to do is present it to um, to a psych psychiatrist and let them write the articles for psych psychiatry today if something like that can get into one of the magazines because you you know as well as I do Pam every psychiatrist in the world has a subscription to psych, you know psychiatry today let right. them read those articles and then let them go with the momentum that us XJWs have already started here on YouTube and social media. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, um, one thing that I, we, I don't know if we've told you, um, both you and Kim, is that um, Elgin and I, we also, we we're on the Speakers Bureau um, for the uh, Schizo uh, Schizophrenia Society of Ontario. Mm. 
We periodically we go into and we speak to different um, police, um, police platoons, platoons um, okay. universal, colleges, different genres, right? But one thing is very, like what we know based on our experience with mental illness, is that they're very influenced by so-called church organizations, church. So there will be there will be a magnet to that as well. Like yeah. So um, the reason why we, we do that, we, we, we talk to um, different organizations. We talk about every area of mental illness and how we can, how you um, treat other people that have a mental illness and some of the approaches you can do. Um, we talk from personal experience because we have certain family members that have had a mental illness. So we may make very good spokespeople for that, right? Mm -hmm. So we've been doing that for a few years, since like uh, several years actually. Yeah. And um, it's been very good. So we want what we're doing is we're going to be using whatever um, platform. platform we have to talk about warning about the Jehovah Witness. Cool. And <laughs> that is awesome. That's what you call raising awareness. <laughs> and I know we've talked on the phone and Skype of how you know great this is because most people. You know, the world does not realize that mental illness and suicides are really high in, you know, the Jehovah Witness organization. Yes. And so I think, you know, what you guys are doing is just incredible and would love to see a video about it sometime. Yes. Yeah. You know what? I want to do a video um, of, like, what we're doing. And I'm just putting certain things in place, like I'm talking to people and so on, and I want to make sure that when I do it, cool. uh, I'll recommend by you guys, because um, I, I think what you guys are doing is just, I know you're, Fantastic. You, you guys aren't doing it alone, but Thank I you. mean, I just want to say that because you guys responded to me first, <laughs> right, that I just think you guys are just awesome people, and yeah, I really respect you. what you're doing, and, and I want to do whatever I can to help, you know, whatever I can. I, 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 don't, I don't think I have to be... Uh, a Jehovah Witness or an ex Jehovah Witness to no. be able to help. And I think it's better that you can get some other people that aren't Jehovah Witnesses to help because you get a different objective. And a different um, perspective. Uh, yes, yes. You know, that's why, you know, I mentioned earlier before that, you know, hearing your perspective as to how you view, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses in the Kingdom Hall is perfect because the JWs do not view themselves that way. So it's really good to have someone else, you know, with a different set of eyes, a different perspective to say, hey, wait a minute, you know, you guys are not normal. <laughs> you guys are weird. Yeah. <laughs> I've never, I, if, Elgin, um, if Elgin had not been started studying with um, this particular individual from his workplace, I would never have known the gravity of the situation. Yeah. Like I said, when I first went to the Kingdom Hall before, and they started talking, when they had an announcement after the talk about the, uh, the silentlambs.org, I was, I mean, aside from that, I would never have known what was going on. I knew there was something up. I said, I always believe that where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. And the fact that there's somebody going to make a special announcement in the congregation about the silent lambs caused me great concern. Yeah. Right? And so, and that was before I had my daughter at the time. And I said to myself, like, Okay, you know, so now when I go back at it, I, I can put the, I can connect the dots now. Yeah. Now, you guys, I'm connecting the dots with, with uh, um, Blackjack and his wife, Kyla, and um, even um, Son of Thunder. I love his, that, that, that name. <laughs> <laughs> Son of Thunder and Eric and um, Joel and um, everyone else. Everybody has a different perspective, and I'm connecting the dots. And yeah. like I said, there, every single day, I tell Elgin, let's go home. I gotta go quick because I gotta go online. I gotta see what else is on there, <laughs> right? I'm checking my phone to make sure there's something going on. Sometimes I make a comment on some of the videos, and mm -hmm. I have some people, some um, Jehovah Witness uh, Bible Bible thumpers, um, <laughs> trying to harass me, right? Yeah. But I put them in their place. Like I put them in their place by simple, you know, and. Um, I, up until today, I did the same thing. <laughs> Good. So, Good. So Pat Pam is really learning a lot. She's she she's done her research big yes. time. And if it wasn't for Pam researching and getting to the bottom of what was really going on, I would still be in the Kingdom yeah, Hall. He would be. Yeah. Wow. And more than likely, you'd probably be living apart, wouldn't you? 
Which, yeah. I, that's without even without question. I yeah. mean, See, and that's that's why we need to absolutely raise awareness as to what Watchtower does because despite what they say on JW.org, they do break up families. They do. Yes, they, they do. do break up yes, families they do. with their shunning policy, which is ridiculous because it, there's nothing biblical about it, first right. of all. Right? With their shunning policies. They the way they do this my I there's a term I use but it's not good to use it on public thing here but they do stuff with your mind yep. right and um, you know to have like ninety year old women online saying that she that her granddaughter doesn't want to talk to her and she wants to talk to her before she dies like, yeah, that's horrible it says what would Jesus do yeah exactly yeah Jesus yeah would turn his back on you yeah Jesus wouldn't do that yeah yep. You just got to be careful, though, when you use that because a Jehovah Witness will accuse you of being a Jesus freak. <laughs> that's, that, but see, that's the mentality we were talking about last night during that podcast. That, that pattern has to be broken. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, talk about being a Jesus freak. I tell you, you know, I am a freak. <laughs> so it's okay. You know, hey, bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> right? You know, I have no problem being called a freak. It's a, well, I feel like I'm being complimented, actually. Well, you right? know, that's, that's why I really loved it last night when Joel went and asked uh, Parker, being an yeah. atheist, can you yeah. fault the teachings of Jesus Christ? Let, let's take the deity out of the equation can you fault his teaching? And it's like, no, you can't. So even if Jesus is not God, just by living and following his teachings is going to make us a better person. And even Gandhi acknowledges that. Yep. Or acknowledged. Yeah. 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 Well, I even tried a conversation with Elgin on the went away from work today, and I said to him, I said, you know, Elgin, I believe there's a trinity. But really, does it really matter? Why do I want to get into a debate about the Trinity for? I said, what, is, what are some of the things I know I should be doing that I'm not doing? Let's just deal with that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Keep simple, just keep it simple. Don't make it complicated. Yep, the yeah, the principle. You know, it's a simple principle. Do I treat my brother like I, I want them to treat me? Yeah. Right? Do I respect people? Do I, you know, these are the things that I don't need to sit down and go over a debate over little tiny things like yeah. that. It's not important. What is important is that... What I know I'm supposed to be doing that I'm doing that I'm doing. And I'm not a perfect person. I make mistakes yeah, too. Right? Well, we all do. And and the biggest thing is is that you can see for yourself now that you've done the research that this particular religion, which is absolutely a cult, is is like a cancer on this earth and it's eating people alive. Yep. That needs to be stopped. Yeah. So it's really encouraging when non when, when I see non Jehovah's Witnesses step up to the plat and plate and take their turn and have their their go at Watchtower. You know, I don't know if you've been introduced to the YouTube channel Brad Zook. No. He he non Jehovah's Witness school teacher had a young Jehovah Witness in his class. He actually indoctrinated himself to learn how to deal with children that are Jehovah's Witnesses in his classroom um, and there there are many others um, I can't think of what's what's another well, one Roy right Spears now um, Roy Spears was is another never one a witness in Tucson and he likes to go and talk to the witnesses at their convention Cali uh, Cali, Cali girl, girl. Cali Girls, another non-Jehovah's Witness that has you know Jason Zelda was, Jason Zelda that's I'm what thinking, I was thinking that's he was, what I remember Jason Zelda. I was watch. I watch a lot of his too. But he goes over every little detail, and I write notes. Yeah. I have notes all over my house. <laughs> Good. As Elgin says to me, Pamela, you got me a little. You're looking a little bit of fanatic. <laughs> <laughs> Elgin should see my desk. Yeah, you should see what this looks like. <laughs> he says, Pam, what do you want me to? What do you want to do with? The um the old Jehovah Witness Bible and the new one, right? I said I I I'm reading it. Never mind, I'm reading it. He yeah. goes, well, you put it on your side of the bed then. I said, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> when we get off of Skype here, I want yeah. you to look up uh, First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, since Second Corinthians five twenty in both of those New World translations. Second, let me show you. You get the pen. Hold on. I get the pen. Yeah, because we, we actually did a video about this this morning, and we're going to upload it here this afternoon. I'm sorry, I didn't mean for you guys to go look for a pen and paper. 
Okay. Second Corinthians. Five twenty. In, in what in what Bible? Both of those Bibles. You both of them. Look at the old rusty one first. Yeah. And then read it in the new silver one. Okay. Second Corinthians see, that, five twenty. That also said it. You see that that also says it too. Oh, okay. Mike says it's in the old rusty sword. Okay, so get your real Bible. Get your real Pam Bible. <laughs> and Elgin, get your real Bible and then compare it with the Jehovah Witness silver one. Okay. You want us to do it now? <laughs> you don't have to. You can wait till later if you want. Okay. okay. But I was shocked, you know, of how the, how the witnesses say they don't have their own Bible. And here's, here's a scriptural text. That they do have their own Bible. And they've changed it, you know, to make it follow, you know, obey the governing body type deal. Yeah. See, in this in this might be something good to to do with some of your fellow church members, educate them how that that new world translation has been tampered with and Watchtower has tampered with it. Yeah, I will I, I, as a matter of fact, um, I was going to ask you where I was doing it, but I'm keeping that around me. I keep it around me. Um, I talk to my friends. Some of my friends, I, I make mention of some stuff with them, but what I'd like to do at some point, I want to have a Bible study in my home and um, with some people, and I want to actually tell them, I want actually, I want to introduce you to my friends. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, right. Wow. You can get all the people here, and they're, they're going to be all Adventists, <laughs> you know, and they will tell other church people, and because they, they all, some of them will go to different churches and right. stuff. Right. Yeah. And it's plant the seed. That's all I do. It's plant yeah, the seed. Yeah, and that's well, you know, honestly, when you look at the scripture, isn't that what Paul said? He says, "I planted, um, Apollos watered, but yeah. God made it grow." I mean, right. we um, scripturally, we are not responsible for making that seed. Grow. All we're responsible for is planting and watering. That that's it. The rest of it is, is is up to God. Simple as that. But the but the problem with that is Watchtower. Um, you know the problem with that scripture is you can't run a multi-billion-dollar corporation off it. <laughs> I know you guys wanted to find out if there was any ex-Jehovah Witnesses in your area, and that's the Toronto area, correct? Oh, see that. <laughs> so if anybody is in their area down in the comments down below this video yeah. tag Pam and Elgin in it and tell them let, let them know that you're in the area and uh, then you can private message through YouTube also yeah yeah you can also private message or you know yeah that's a way to do it or even not even, even private message me put it out there <laughs> just put it on there I don't care it doesn't matter to me yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to let them know that um, there's people out there that care, and not just people that are ex Jehovah Witnesses. There's a lot of other people that care. I know people that I talk to there there as well. They don't know. They just don't know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. But that would be great to have a meet up at your you know place or a park or something. Sure. And you know even when we could like we could all Skype like in one place, we could all be together and yeah. just to know that there's support there, you know. We could yeah. do our Google we could do our Google hangout. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you bet. That's fun. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and, and hopefully they get the message out there that, you know, there's other people out there that care and um you can tell JW Crisis Gilbert. He can talk to me any way he wants. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Gilbert's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, Gilbert's a good guy. He's got a very good heart. But, you know, Mike and I want to thank you so much for sharing your story, you know, because we're so happy that both of you are together still. And, yeah. you know. Happy. Yes. Good. Yeah, we're happy together. So if we if we if we split up, it's only because he left a sink in the dish in the in the dish rack. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was gonna say something like he left the toilet seat up. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> that, that too. <laughs> I, I, I fall in the t in the toilet seat a few times because of that. Elliot, yeah. shame on you. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I, no, I, no, I do what the ladies do. I sit down. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know that I would have admitted that. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I know. One of the 
things that Ivan will still wants to do. He wants to have another uh, Bible study, but he wants to actually t audio tape it. Yeah, that that would be good, especially knowing what you know now. Exactly. That would be good. Just yeah. just to ask those subtle questions and watch how they react to it. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So I, I'm trying to figure out. Elgin is a pretty good actor. I like to see him do this. I like to know how is he going to do it without really like bringing up something, you know? Like yeah. I don't know how he's going to regurgitate everything when he's saying stuff. I, I, I'm curious. Yeah. yeah. So I, want to, I want him to have the Bible study because they won't want me there. So. <laughs> and you've got smartphones, right, to record it, so you can. Yeah. 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 It's very, yeah. it's very clear and everything like that, so you can just record it. Awesome. And, um, so I'm, I'm, he, the other guy has been wanting to get in contact with him for the longest while to have a Bible study with him. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Another yeah, thing too. Guy. He wants him to go to the conference. It's going to be here in Toronto, in Oshawa, um, July. In July? And he wants him to, can you believe this? He wants him to come, Elgin to come, and he could stay in a hotel with him and his people for, for three, three days. days. Yeah. But he wow. wants Elgin to come he and stay in a hotel. He wants me to leave my family. <laughs> By themselves for three days, and to go with him and his friends, wow. and and go to the conference. Sounds like a big orgy to me. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know with these people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you never know. It's weird. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is weird. Yeah, because you know, typically, well, speaking from experience, when Kim and I were indoctrinated. You know, we would never, it would never cross our minds to ask the head of the house to come to the district convention without inviting the family. The family. Exactly. I mean, we, we, we wouldn't, that wouldn't even cross our minds. So, you know, I, I'm kind of wondering if a little something else isn't going on behind the scenes with this particular JW. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, he's getting lots of instruction from his, um, from his elder. His elder friend. Yeah. yeah, his elder friend. And yeah. uh, I heard it, the elder friend over the phone, because Elgin puts every every conversation he has with them, he puts it on speaker. <laughs> yeah. So I hear everything. He's and I'm hearing. writing notes like crazy. I'm writing notes like crazy, asking them to ask questions. Yeah. And they never ask, they never answer any questions, and they use a lot of re reflection and stuff like that. And yeah. That's what they're trained to do. Yeah. 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 So ask a question with a question. Yeah. 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 So we look That's forward to fine. your YouTube channel, and be sure to you know let us all know when you start uploading stuff like that because that would be awesome. Okay. My only dilemma is to figure out what kind of handle name I'm going to use. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Everything else is easy. Yeah. yeah. Everything is easy. Yeah. Yes, I know. Yeah. So, all right. Well, this has been great, guys. Um, I'm thank, thank you, you for so the much. opportunity of letting us do this, putting this on our YouTube channel, and we hope that um, you know that the Jehovah's Witnesses that do take the time to watch this will really come away with a different perspective. Because in the eyes of non-Jehovah's Witnesses, this is how you people appear, mm -hmm. and from ex-members. Now that we've backed away, now we can see what we, what we used to appear like, and it's it's not normal. It, it's absolutely not normal. Okay. So, thank you all for tuning in. My name is Elgin. This hey. is Pam. See you. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay. Bye. -bye.